Hello and welcome to Make Explore Art. Now today we're going to create a tessellated lino print. So you will need a few pieces of equipment to get started. You'll need some tracing paper, a pencil, a ruler and an image to work from. As we go through this process, it will take a little bit of patience, but trust me, you'll be pleased with the results in the end. So first of all, measure a 10 by 10 centimeter square on a piece of tracing paper. Then trace the outline of your design. If you need to pause the next stages, please do so that you get this right. Measure five centimeters and put a mark around all the sides of your square piece. This is particularly important because this is where you're going to mark out and navigate through your design. So using a coloured pencil, start from one side and then use your line to navigate to the opposite side, but try to go through your design as much as possible. Try to avoid using a straight line as this will become really confusing in the next stage. Now cut along these coloured lines and label the sections one to four. You'll now have four sections that you can rearrange and the way that you do this is you swap your diagonal numbers. So for example, the two goes to opposite the three and the one goes to opposite the four. Now as long as these match in the middle, because there are right angles in the middle, you can match those up. Tape the pieces together on the centre joins. Now it's time for the puzzle. Does the top edge and the bottom edge look like it fits together perfectly? Does the side edge and the opposite side fit together perfectly like a jigsaw puzzle? Then I'd like you to flip it over and place it down onto a piece of lino. Now draw around the outer edge of the design using a biro so that you can clearly see this. Then trace the whole design using a biro. This will mean it's more likely for you to see the graphite underneath and on the surface of the lino. So that you can clearly see your design ready to cut, go over this with a permanent marker. Just be mindful that any marks or lines or filled shapes with the black marker are the areas that you don't cut. So just think about this within your design. Now you're ready to use your lino cutting tools. Now you might have a U gauge or a V gauge, both of them do slightly different things. Um, the U gauge is for removing large areas and the V gauge is for removing detailed areas. Test your lino cutting skills around the outside edge of your design as this will be removed once you have finished your design. If you can, always rotate your lino cut so that you are cutting away from you at all times. Now carefully, using a scalpel, cut around the outer edge of your design. 
Try to do this neatly and accurately. And if you're not sure how to do this, please ask an adult to help you cut this. So to do my test print, I'm going to use a water-based ink and I'm going to use black ink on white paper. This is so that I can clearly see my image. I'm squeezing out a long strip of the ink and then I'm going to use my brayer or roller to roll it over the surface of my palette. When it sounds like peeling an orange, that's when your whole roller is usually covered with ink. You only need a thin layer to roll over your lino, but make sure that you put some scrap paper underneath your lino cut before you start rolling. Now carefully flip over your lino and place it down on the surface of your paper. Use the clean roller to roll over the back of your lino. You should find that your lino cut aligns perfectly above and below each time you print. This is called a tessellated pattern. If it doesn't quite fit, just look at your lino cut and see what needs cutting out or cutting into. I hope that's given you some good ideas of how you can now create your own larger pieces of work using coloured papers or coloured ink combinations. There are so many possibilities. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Make Explore Art for more tips, tricks and tutorials and see you next time.